What is up everybody? I am back, I am invigorated, and I've got another cup of coffee, so I've got a lot of energy. Stick around guys, we're gonna feed some critters and get into some maintenance on this video. Haven't done this in a while, so bringing you guys along. So I'm finally kind of back on track here at the moment. Things are starting to look pretty good again, but it is a good chance for me to kind of hook in, get some maintenance done. I need to get some things cleaned up here. I've got all sorts of poop hanging around in all sorts of places. Thank you, mate. You've got to get really stuck into this sort of gear and give it a good clean up. Um, I want to just give all these guys a bit of a spruce, a bit of a feed, see how what's going on with everybody, kind of give you guys a bit of an update on a few things. There's my little hopping mice down there. They're needing some food. And uh, yeah, basically I'm just gonna walk around, show you guys some of the critters, get up to a bit of cleaning. You know the drill. It's all the same sort of stuff that we always do. But anyway, let's get stuck in. Oh, so before I get started, I'm actually just going to get down my cricket tubs, give these guys a bit of a knockout, get all my crickets in order, so be easily accessible for when I go around and give these guys a good feed. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a water change on Loki because she's looking pretty grubby. While that's happening, I'm probably gonna take a break for lunch, start defrosting some rodents, maybe even some fish for Loki. And then I'll probably get hooked in, clean everything up, and then I'll start dishing out food to everybody basically. So yeah, let's get started. So I've got a couple of my cricket tubs here. Basically all I'm gonna do, Knock them all out, let them into the tub without all the cardboard. I like to keep a couple of these cardboard tubes in there just so that when all the crickets decide to hide, they've got that tube to hide in. Then I can shake them into a jar, get them into the enclosures for all the critters. And last night, I did a little bit of an overlay here, but I actually gut loaded all my crickets and my cockroaches and stuff like that, so they should be nicely well fed. These are my little small crickets here. Set all that aside. But yeah, just simple process. Just this is just me trying to make it efficient for myself to be able to go through, feed and clean everybody. Alright, on to the next task. So surprise, surprise, Loki's having a swim. I'm just gonna pull this hose a little bit further in. I do miss having my lawn <laughs> back at my old place. At least emptying your enclosure was super easy. I could just pump it all out onto the lawn. These days, it's a little bit different. I've got to pump it into the courtyard and pop it down into a, uh, a drain, essentially, just the courtyard drain. I like to take that off just because she has a habit of chewing on things. So at least that keeps that nice and safe. I'm gonna go start siphoning at the other end and start filling it into a drain. Then we'll go defrost some food. Something else you may have noticed is I've actually taken down the little fish tanks that I had up there and also down on this rack. Um, so I had four fish tanks around there and I just decided to consolidate them all. Currently that little tank's just got some guppies in there that are for a lionfish of mine uh, who doesn't want to eat some frozen food. But basically I consolidated all of those little fish, fish tanks, my blackwater fish tanks, into one tank in the bedroom. And there that is. So yeah, basically I'm just trying to downsize everything, try to make my workload really minimal at the moment. I really wanted to keep these fish because I absolutely love Amazonian fish. So I've got a bunch of epistogrammas in here as well as some neon, oh sorry, not neon tetras, cardinal tetras, glow light tetras, a few bits and pieces. Uh, I've got an L144 
uh, lemon bristle nose down there as well. I think there's another one hiding in here as well. But yeah, basically just trying to consolidate everything in my life at the moment. Okay, so now we're in the actual laundry. Um, I've got a spare little freezer here that you'd probably recognize from my last place. And in here I've actually got not only some food for, for us, but I've also got bassa fillets. So I picked these up yesterday for Loki. And I've also got to get some rats together because I think I'm going to do a feed on most of my smaller snakes as well at the moment. So what have we got there? Four wiener rats. So I might just get a few, a few hoppers or a few more wieners or something like that out and kind of keep everybody content. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them into snap seal bags if I can. Put them in the tub. Just got some hot water in there to frost everything while water, uh, Leggy's water change has been done. Yeah, just try to keep it all nice and neat. Okay, so the rodents are all sorted. I'm just going to chuck those into the tub. Um, just save their little bag. I'm actually going to go cut this while it's frozen. Just kind of cut it into a few chunks as well. And then I'll put it into here so then it can defrost inside the tub for Loki. Nice big piece of bassa. So bass is a freshwater fish, I believe. So that's why I do it for lakes, so it's uh, not going to be so bad for her, not so salty, etc. A little bit hard to cut while it's frozen, but it was a lot cheaper to buy it frozen than, than fresh. We'll get her a few chunks here and see if we can keep the girl happy. So I'm probably not going to feed her a whole fillet, I think that'd be a little bit excessive, but what I will do is just put a few into this bag, chuck it in with, that'll probably be good enough for her for one feed, chuck it in with those rodents, and the rest of it can all go back into the freezer. Alright, time to fill her up. Back into the laundry we go. Put some light on. Need a bit more hose. There we go. Oh, okay. All connected. Doesn't need to be hot. All right, let's see how this is going. Stuff everywhere. There we go. Filling up. You guys might have noticed in that last little clip that all the lights turned off in Loki's room there and it happened in here too and there's a reason for it. Because of the grid connect system that I've got hooked up to everything, I've got a little bit of an emergency override shall we call it in place so if the outside temperature of the suburb that I live in reaches above 32 degrees it automatically cuts off the power to everything in here and that's a bit of a safety factor in the sense that I'm not always here, so I'm not always running aircon or anything like that to try to keep steady temperatures in here. So if it's hot outside, it generally gets hot inside. Now, above 28 degrees, I've got things in play where, you know, heat lights cut out and etc, etc. But in this circumstance, pretty much everything apart from these little lights cut out just because they're on just full ball. And uh, basically, that's the reason that they all flicked off. So a little bit of a safety override, nothing too complicated, but it's just one of those things to kind of save my animals at the end of the day. Today's a bit a little, a little bit abnormal though because I'm actually home and I'm running the aircon, so I'm going to flick all the lights back on because it's actually quite nice and cool inside the, the home here. And uh, yeah, I'll show you how Loki's enclosure is looking now. Okay, so I've just flicked the lights back on in here, and any of you keen-eyed watchers, you may have noticed that Atlas's enclosure was actually open the whole time. And an unfortunate reason for that is, unfortunately, I have had to sell Atlas as part of the downsize. Um, I absolutely <laughs> that was gut-wrenching because I absolutely love that snake so you know it's one of those animals that 
I know he's going to get so much bigger and I just don't think for the foreseeable future I can give him the home that he's going to need. So anyway, a little bit of an arrangement with his new owner is if, if he ever decides to sell Atlas or move him on, um, I want to be the first person to have the opportunity to get him back, which um, would be awesome because I would love to have him back, but unfortunately probably for the next couple of years it doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to house such a large animal. Especially when I've got things like this little monster down here. So, a couple of other animals have actually left the left the home as well. I'll uh, get my swag out of the way here. I'm trying to get prepped for Kakadu. Um, yeah, so, my tubs are right. Yeah, the water pythons are gone now too. So, another sad day um, to see those go. But they've gone to a good mate. Uh, you guys might know him as... K&E Family Reptiles or Kurt Lamott um, he hooked me up with a couple of black-headed monitors a little while ago so he's been keen on water pythons so I decided to give him the water pythons and give them a good home and uh, yeah hopefully you know if he ever decides to move them on same sort of dealio I just kind of get first op opportunity to to get them back but it is what it is you know it's just one of those scenarios that really sucks but it's something that I've been toying with the idea for for a while so I'm pretty sure that the only animals that I haven't found home for homes for just as yet are the northern velvet geckos. So I've got three of those guys, a breeding pair and a juvenile, with potentially another one on the way. Um, and my jungle python car, so the, the big jungle girl that's up in here. So, you know, if anybody out there is keen on big jungle and a few northern velvet geckos, just let me know, because I'd be more than happy to, uh, to sadly part way with a few of these animals. <laughs> even just talking about it honestly just starts bringing tears to my eyes but anyway something that I wanted to do today as well is I want to actually just clean out Atlas's old enclosure get all the dirt and everything out of there because I will probably end up selling these enclosures as well um, and the water pythons I'm going to clean out their tubs just so they're they're clean we've got a bit of a council clean up at the moment so I want to go and dump it all on the on the sidewalk there and not have to carry it around to a tip or anything like that. So I'm going to get stuck into that now. So Loki's hunting around a little bit at the moment. She's definitely in the mood for some food. But she has <laughs> she's just down here off the side here. She hasn't seen the pink tongs yet. The pink tongs for her are definitely an indicator that she's about to get fed. So I'm gonna try to just sneakishly open up this door. Or maybe not so sneaky. And see if we can get her to have a little bit of fish here for us. I, d I don't doubt that she's gonna love this. <laughs> Hair in the back. She loves her fish. <laughs> Just shut that up before she decides my fingers are food as well. <laughs> But she's hoofed that back. Yeah, she definitely loved that. A little bit of a fishy treat, hey mate? So we're not gonna do too much to these little hopping mice just because they, um, they've they got some babies at the moment that you may or may not hear squeak. So these guys are just gonna be left to their own devices but we will get them some food and see if we can keep them fed. Get those little ones. Or waking up getting in the bright lights. <laughs> But yeah, we'll go and grab them some tucker. We'll throw it in here and see a few of them crawl out. Okay, so I'm going to go and put together a salad for the little mice, for Sonic, the bearded dragon, and I'll also do some 
some uh, cat biscuits and also some salad and stuff for the Blue Tongue and Cunninghams outside and we'll go and dish it all out to them. Okay, so we got some food all made up for the for the animals here. This one I'm going to give to the hopping mice because this has actually got spinach in it as well as blueberries and some of the, the butter lettuce that I grow outside. This one here I'll feed to Sonic, so a little bit of hibiscus flour from the tree outside. And then we've also got the butter lettuce and some blueberries. Same again for the, the Cunninghams and the Blue Tongue, but I'm also going to give them some dry cat pellets to just last them in the next few days or so. Um, Alright, let's go dish it out. Maybe we'll start with Sonic first and see how he likes that. Hey bud, want some salad? What do you got in here? Bet you want a bit of that, don't ya? Yeah, you love hibiscus. <laughs> you can chew, you know. That's your dorky lizard. All right, don't take my fingers. Do you want a blueberry? I don't give him blueberries very often, but they're a bit of a treat. It's kind of like one of those things that I might do once every few months or something for him. Like, they're very infrequent. Dragons aren't the best with sugar, so I just try not to do too much of it. No button that. There we go. I'll let you find the rest. Lazy lizard. <laughs> Loves it. Okay. Chuck this down in here. Out of the sunshine. I'll do that. Whoa. Down there as well. I'm gonna see somebody crawling around. So here we go, got a bit of food for these guys. I've got a rat and mouse cube, which they love. I've also got <laughs> spinach, butter lettuce, and blueberries. And then I've got a tiny bit of water too. I don't do a lot of water with these guys because I tend to get a lot of their moisture from their food, but I like to try to do it maybe once or twice a week where I just give them a shallow dish. So you can see they're all starting to come out now. There's another one hanging around down here somewhere. And I think I've counted another three babies, so... They're all fighting over the one leaf down there. <laughs> crazy little characters. Absolute crazy little characters. These guys, when they bound around with a blueberry in their mouth, it's so cute. But yeah, they're uh, very, very cute little animals. I'm, <clears throat> I'm hoping that they actually raise these babies to adulthood, because they haven't done that with uh, too many of them yet, so... I'd like to actually get a few of them up to size and, and see what they do. Yeah, with, with the water bowls, they tend to just fill them full of sand and turn them into a bit of a cement mix almost. So I don't do a lot of water with them. Uh, I just do a lot of fresh veggies. Uh, carrots are a great one for them to get a lot of metabolic moisture. Um, they love the blueberries, but I do a lot of spinach, kale, leafy greens and such like that as well. So anyway, we'll leave these guys to it. I don't want to disturb them too much. Hence why I'm not going to go overboard cleaning the enclosure or anything like that because I want them to feel nice and secure with their little bubbies at the moment. Now comes my favourite part of the day, getting stuck into some of those hard to get off urates. I hate Oedora for this fact. It's so lucky that they are so gorgeous, but geez, if you want a gecko that's going to poop everywhere, Oedura are definitely the gecko for you. What I'm going to use to actually help remove all these urates and poop and stuff like that is just my water bottles, my water sprayer. You can kind of just pump it up into like a real high pressure system, kind of knock off the bulk of it. And then on top of that I'm going to use an old toothbrush. Make sure not to give that to your girlfriend or your wife again, that'll be a really bad mistake to make. And apart from that, all I'm going to do is yeah, hook in and essentially scrub it off. Scrub it into the dirt. I let all the springtails and isopods and stuff like that, they tend to break it all down pretty good after that. Um, I, I, some big chunks I might remove and put into the bin as such. I generally let the cleanup crew do what they're actually meant to do. Um, in this circumstance too, I don't use F10 in enclosures that are got like more sensitive animals like geckos, frogs, stuff like that. 
if I'm going to remove an animal for a period of time and actually, you know, uh, give it a good good once over, then yes, I might use F10. But I'd probably do that for more things like gamuts and lizards and snakes and stuff like that. Not necessarily geckos as such. They tend to be a little bit more fragile in that sense. Especially as I've learnt recently, that's for sure. Anyway, going to chuck the time lapse on. We're going to clean some enclosures. I'm going to chuck on carpets and coffee. Another great podcast done by the NPR network. And uh, yeah, get listening to that and have a little bit of a fun session just cleaning out my animals. Well, they're not half bad, but I think I just need to get like something like a heavy duty nail brush or something to really get some of these urates off because it's really adhering to the tile pointing quite hard. Um, and the toothbrush, whilst it used to do it, it just seems like I'm just left with like a little bit of speckling and stuff up there. So anyway, we're going to get something else uh, down the line here. I think I need to get a new pump pump as well for my um, my bottle. It's just not holding pressure as, as much as it used to be. So anyway, got to invest in some new gear, I think. But yeah, the enclosures are looking a little bit better than what they were. And uh, yeah, the geckos were <laughs> cruising around inside of them as well. There's a little aberrans over there and the other guy's sitting over on here. I didn't bother doing the glass just yet, just because he's sitting there. So thought I'd give him, give him that opportunity at least. But yeah, anyway, let's throw some crickets around and see who's hungry. All right, let's get some crickets happening here. So just got a little jar. I've got some calcium powder without vitamin D3 in this one. What I like to do, I like to just sit it down inside the cricket tub like so, pick up these tubes, do that, then you get a whole bunch of crickets in your jar, and then from there you can go and shake it up and dish out your bugs to your animals. So, I'm going to see how I go filming this with one, <laughs> one hand, might be a bit dodgy, but this is what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to open this up, grab my tweezers here, pick up a few crickets, Quickly try to get them across into here, and hopefully these little guys are hungry. It's a pretty warm day, so no doubt they're wanting a bit of tucker. I don't know what Sonic can see, but he's uh, he seems pretty excited again as well, so we might even give him some of those as well. Oh, well, Gilbert's queued in. This is the OG, the original Gil and I. Hello, mate. You guys want some bugs? Yeah. Little girl was down there, she's just behind the log there. And old Gilbert, he's down here, shoving all of them back. Oh, she's got one. Yeah, get it in ya. There you go. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? <laughs> it's hard to keep up with them. Too quick. Throwing them back. <laughs> Let's see if the Kimberly Rock Monitor wants some as well. Oh, not quite. There we go, there's another one there. You gonna grab it? Hey! Well done, Mrs. Wiggles. Well done. <laughs> I chucked a few more in here to see if she wanted to take off for them. Wait. Looks like she's on the one. Where can you see it? <laughs> Where are you? Oh, there you are. Smashing them down. Big Bilbo. There you go, mate. A few cricks for you too. Oh my goodness. 
goodness, look how dirty that track is. I've got to get into that. So here we are at the black headed monitor enclosure. This thing's oh, just in a state of needs repair, but I don't think I'm going to bother. I think I'm just going to build them something way bigger and let them have at it. These guys are growing like weeds. As you can see, compared to when I first had them in this enclosure, they've probably tripled in size. <laughs> Beautiful animals. I absolutely love my monitors. These guys have got cracking black tails on them and really nice patterning through the rest of the body. Pretty shy animals, but I'm going to work on it and I think they're going to come around pretty well. They're starting to tongue feed and, and do that sort of stuff. So hopefully all going to plan when I build them something that's a lot bigger than this. Like in fact, at least four times the size, then yeah, hopefully they'll come around a fair bit, but we'll, we'll see how they go. Loves it. Getting it back. Look at these couple of cute little Gil and I hanging out in their log up here. Doing their thing. I love these little lizards. Got to be my favourites. Looks like Oakley's on the hunt. He's munching down a big cricket. He's such a good little hunter, this skink. Absolutely loves it. Little powerhouse. I love these little succulents that are just growing wild in his enclosure too. He just goes straight through them like it's nothing. You got anything, mate? Did you get another one? Beautiful little skink though, isn't he? That will do the boys as well. I'll let them hunt the crickets this time. See if they uh, if they want to catch them themselves. The little girl's pretty keen. She's straight onto it. The boy's just hiding down over here too, so chances are he'll probably grab a few as they kind of wander past him. These little guys are doing so well at the moment though. Very happy with these little lizards. Hopefully we should have a couple of hatchies from these guys coming out soon too, so that'll be a bit of fun. Something exciting. There you go. You can grab one as well. Look at that beautiful little face. <laughs> it's nice and cool in here for them today, actually. They must be pretty happy. All in all, their enclosures are doing really well. The bird's nests just need a bit more water, so I think I might have to like extend the drip line system or something into that crack to see if I can get the water just going down there as well. But most of the plants are going nuts. I really do need to get into this and cut back the ficus because it's just hogging all the light up the top. And we've got this beautiful rapus palm here too, which is growing like really, really well. I'm trying to get the ficus pamela to take off as well, but the boys just keep loving, they, they love it, they just sit in it, so they keep trampling it. So hopefully that'll eventually take hold too, because I'd love for like the full back wall to almost be, you know, green and just lush. So we'll try to feed a few small crickets to the, the little depressor that I've got left down here. This is the lucky one that, that made it. I usually just pop about half a dozen to 10 little crickets in here and usually it comes out and goes goes berserk so I'm not sure if it's going to be a bit camera shy today but you might be able to see it or oh, you can't quite just not quite in the film there but so you can see a bit of urate up the top there where it's been pooping on the top wall there going absolutely berserk I'll see if I can overlay some clips or something like that if he doesn't decide to come out now because he's such a beautiful little animal and I haven't introduced him to the channel at all yet We'll see if we've, uh, get lucky here, hey? Okay, so we're gonna go through and feed off our rodents here. Just got my little tub of food down here. First up is potentially this ruffy. It actually looks like it could be in shed, so I don't know how it's gonna go. May or may not want actually a feed. Potentially not. Doesn't seem like it's overly keen. 
just looking a little bit blue at the moment, so I'm not going to be surprised if it is in shed. But sometimes I like to just try to tease feed them a little bit to see if they actually do want it. Absolute worst case, I do know who's going to absolutely love this and means that she'll be able to get an extra one. Whoop. Sorry about the rat butt shot. <laughs> but this girl here, she's ravenous. So it's probably been a couple of weeks since her last feed. She's doing really well. She's starting to put size back on. She's, yeah, uh, I'm really stoked with how this girl's doing. So I'm glad that she's kind of back in the right track and Yep, looks like she's getting an extra mouse today as well, and there's no problem with that in my books. <laughs> so you may or may not have actually noticed it, but I actually do separate all my snakes out now. So any of the ones that are in, a, you know, two in a tub or whatever in an enclosure rather, um, I like to feed them separately now because these roughies in particular, jeez, those budgies are noisy. These roughies in particular have been known to chew on each other, and I don't want to go through that again. That was quite, quite uh, scary last time. So. Here we go. He can have a little meal. He can hang down in here. I'll just pop him over beside the uh, beside the enclosure over here and come back in a few hours and let him loose back into the enclosure so then uh, he can go and warm up again. So there's little wasabi up there. He's just having a feed. I didn't bother filming that just because that's such a hard enclosure to get into. Down here we've got Severus. Looks like he's actually had a shed as well. So we'll see if we can grab him a rat. Probably been a few weeks since his last feed, so I'm sure it'll be. Oh, yep, ravenous, just as uh, I suspected. Okay, and then we've got the two children's pythons left as well. So these guys are actually going to be down here. There's one there. There you go, mate. Come out here. Do you want to have a look at you? So I think that's the male. Yeah, that's the male. And we'll go down to the bottom tub. And here's the girl. Gave us all those beautiful babes this year. She can have that one too. And then what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go behind me, grab the last one, and I'm just going to pop it there. For when Midori's ready, probably in about another 15 minutes or so. So there you have it guys, just another simple video. I know it's just a bit of a hodgepodge of one, but I know a few of you guys get a good kick out of these sorts of videos. And yeah, I'm glad to be kind of back in the swing of things a little bit. And yeah, hopefully I just keep firing on all cylinders from there. Really excited to get out to Kakadu. Had the swag out today as well, just to try to prepare all that and see what that's all about. But guys, if you like this video, make sure to give it a like down below. Make sure to drop it a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more reptile related content. And don't forget to check me out on Teespring and Patreon as well if you want to support the channel even further. And I really appreciate that. Alright guys, until next time, take it easy and I'll catch you then.